Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is a clip from my interview with Soundgarden producer Michael Beinhorn. If you want to see the full interview, it's linked below. And so you mentioned now that at a certain point, things started to get, you know, a little bit tense with the guys because you kept pressing to get certain things on a certain way. From what I understand, you recorded the record from July to September of 93. At what point did that start to happen, that kind of tension? Was it later on? Like, how early did that start? The tension? Not necessarily tension. It might be the wrong um, word. The, uh, like, the, the conflict of, let's just move on, no, let's stay. Oh, no, it was, no, it was tense. I, no, I mean, tension is, 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 the right, is definitely the right word. I mean, it kind of happened before we went into the studio. It might have had something to do with the fact that I, I told the guys that I felt that they needed to have more material for the record. I really had to take an unpopular position on that record quite frequently. I mean, a lot, most of the, a good portion of the record was me taking an unpopular position, mm. usually with the band or a band member or something like that. And I never liked being in that position, but at the same time, it's, I just feel if you're, if you're doing something that's got any kind of artistic um, resonance to it, something that's going to resonate with people emotionally, it's really important to kind of, I felt that it was important for me to stand my ground. You know, we had an initial, we had an initial break in period where they were uncomfortable with how I was working. And I don't think that they ever completely got used to it. Um, but I didn't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get fired at any point. So I guess that they tolerated it enough. Uh, I think that even though they didn't like that, they, 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 they accepted the bet. They, they made the bed that they had to, that they had to lie in, um, or, you know, they, they accepted the bed that they had to lie in. They didn't, they just didn't like the way the bed had been made. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they kind of, they just, they accepted it after a while, but it was never, it was never an easy process making that record. I hear you. But sometimes you need that, that tension actually contributes to the creative energy I find when it comes to a lot of the really great records out there. Just my observation. It, it. can, mm -hmm. it, it definitely can. I mean, I'm, there isn't one aspect of this record that I'm going to look back on and go, it should have been done differently because I think the ends more than justify the means, you know, and I, I'm, I, I've never been anything less than incredibly proud of that record. And there isn't one part of it that I think should or could have been done differently. You know, again, I'm proud of that record. I'm, I'm happy to have worked with those guys. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled beyond belief that it worked well, that it worked out well for them, which is all I really wanted to do. And they deserved it, you know, because they're, they were, they're a fantastic band. And, uh, you know, and they wrote amazing songs. I mean, I can talk for days about the work that I did on it, but, you know, the record wouldn't have existed without their music and their performances. So they, they more than roast the occasion on it. Mm -hmm. You know, they did a fantastic job. We got this drum sound after about like five or six days and the band were kind of like, we could have cut all the drum tracks in these past five or six days. I mean, they were really pissed off at that point, but I was like, you know, I, I realized that I was not making myself very popular, but, you know, I looked at the record and I was like, look, this is you guys shot, you know, mm -hmm. you've hired me to do a job, right? And if you, you know, if you, you're hiring me to do this job, I'm going to do it the best way I see fit. I'd like you to have something that you're going to not only be able to live with, but it's going to actually be relevant to you in like 20 years or something like that. Mm -hmm you know, that's going to be meaningful and that, that will be long lasting, maybe outlast all of us if we're really lucky, you know, so I just kind of stuck to my guns on it. So, you know, you said now that you kind of stuck to your guns, you wanted to get this record done right, so it would last as long as it can. And certainly you succeeded in that, you know, S Super Unknown is one of, is is their biggest record, one of the biggest records from the 90s period. When that record really took off, what was your reaction to it? Did you expect that success or like, how did you, what was your reaction? I didn't really know what to expect. Hmm. Uh, I knew that at least one of the songs on the record was going to be very, very well received. I felt that there were a bunch of other songs on the record that could do, that, that could be received well also. But I knew that Black Hole Sun was, that was going to, you know, really turn people's heads. Uh, I had no idea how well it was going to do. I, it just wasn't really in my, um, 
it wasn't in my purview. Like I, I didn't, I, I didn't think like that so much. I just wanted to make the best record that I could with these guys because I wanted to make sure that they had something that would sustain their careers and would also have some, some duration to it, some longevity.